I doubt that it would surprise any of our regular listeners to learn that a movie is basically ruined for me as soon as the narrative doesn't add up. I'm not talking about scientific inaccuracies and shit. I'm a big fan of the MCU. Gamma rays turn you into a mood-specific giant rage monster. Whatever, I'm with you. Tell me your story. I mean, yes, it drives me a little fucking nuts when a Star Trek movie forgets how gravity works. But by and large, I can get through bad science in a movie without sounding like Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter feed. But when they fuck up the narrative, I'm entirely torn out of things. You know, like when you're sitting there going like, okay, but how does he know that she knows that? Or why wouldn't they just call so-and-so on the phone? I'm checking out. I'll make a slight exception for time travel movies because you can basically never get those to add up except Tenet, which is amazing no matter what anybody says. But the whole point of me being there is the fucking story. If the story doesn't add up, then there's no point but the explosions. Now, I have no evidence to back this up, but my anecdotal experience, but I feel like this need for a cohesive narrative in movies has to correlate with atheism to some degree. I mean, that's how I wound up here. Started off with my parents' Christianity. The narrative didn't add up, so I started looking for something that made more sense. I got sucked into neo-pagan woo for a bit, and it was easier to forgive the contradictions there because there was no orthodoxy. Right? If, I, if I read something that conflicted with the stuff I already believed, I could reject that author without fucking up my whole narrative. But wrong always portrays itself if you wait long enough, and eventually all the scaffolds of dried bullshit that I built to hold up my narrative started to break apart, so I reluctantly embraced reality. Of course, when you change your beliefs as radically as I did, you're often called upon to justify that change, and when I did, I'd simply appealed to the narrative. I'd show my old neo-pagan friends places where their narrative just didn't make any sense. I'd point to ways that magic could be proven to exist if it were real. I'd point out that the definition of the word energy seems to shift constantly to fill particular needs with them. I'd point out that there was no actual historical record to justify the supposed ancient origins of their mystical knowledge. And by and large, nobody would argue with any of the specific examples I gave. They'd just chastise me for being too cynical or too literal. Come to think of it, it's the same thing people do when I point out plot holes in movies. But that's just the thing. Not everybody needs the narrative to tie together. I mean, I get that when it comes to movies to some degree, but it's hard for me to even contemplate a perspective where, you know, I'm okay with reality not adding up because like potholes in reality are lies. (laughs) They're, They're proof that the thing you're being told isn't true. And yet for some people, that's not all that convincing. Many people don't bother to put together a cohesive narrative to undergird their worldview at all, and some people actively avoid doing that for fear that it would cause the whole thing to fall apart. Now, this disconnect is the source of a lot of confusion when we try to communicate with the other side. You see situations constantly where the skeptic's entire defense is just to state the other side's narrative, and then they feel like it should be done. They should be finished at that point, right? You say something like, okay, so you're saying that God sacrificed himself to himself to appease himself for offending himself? Or you say, like, so you're saying that water has a memory and knows what used to be in it to the dilution of one atom per Indian Ocean? Or so you're saying there's a group of people that are clever and sneaky enough to rule the world, but not clever and sneaky enough to leave the evidence out of their company logos? And for us, that seems like slam dunk shit, right? If the narrative doesn't make sense, the assertion doesn't make sense. But if you don't need a concrete narrative, none of that shit matters. Your narrative can always bend however it has to so that every question lands in the same conclusion eventually. For you and me, having such a flexible narrative is just bad epistemology, but for them, it's a point of pride. It's an open mind, right? As setting aside all the justifications for racism and sexism and shit, that's usually what people mean when they deploy the just asking questions defense. I'm not defending any one narrative. I don't even have one. Right. In fact, for a lot of these people, they go out of their way to avoid one. Yes, certain moral precepts and bumper sticker slogans are sacrosanct, but how you get there can change from day to day, hour to hour, from point to counterpoint. Of course, the need for a harmonious narrative isn't the exclusive domain of atheism. There are plenty of religious people with the same needs, and they're always a little bit more pathetic in their arguments. Right. They're the ones that construct whole schools and museums and amusement parks to try to insulate their brains from virtually all scientific knowledge. But far more common are the people who know better than to check their own math. They want questions and they get pissed off at answers. They scour the world for some shred of evidence that disproves the scientific worldview, not so that they can substitute it with some other worldview, but so that they can justify their complete lack of one. And much like a person defending their movie against my pedantry, they get really 
pissed off when you point out the plot holes in their open mind. 